Extreme Championship Wrestling. A company that really changed the landscape in the history of professional wrestling. It was very counterculture as opposed to what we were seeing in WWF and WCW in the early 90s. People wanted to go extreme. And Paul Heyman, Todd Gordon, and a bunch of wrestlers in a little bingo hall in Philadelphia changed the landscape of all things professional wrestling. And on this new series here on World Championship Wreckage, we go through the legacy of the most hardcore three letters in professional wrestling history. I am Husky Rhodes, and welcome to Wrecking Crew Retrospective. Let's get extreme. In 1996, ECW was really gaining ground. They had an extreme cult-like following where they needed to grow, and the only way that they could grow was to do a pay-per-view. The fans of ECW were constantly hitting up their cable providers, and TV providers to get more access. Finally, Hugh Panero from Request TV, which became On Demand, finally listened to the people and said, okay, let's give this a shot. Now, ECW, being controversial as they were, almost lost their pay-per-view due to an incident in Revere, Massachusetts. There was a match that was supposed to be the Gangsters versus Axel Rotten and Devon Dudley. Sadly, Axel Rotten had to pull out of the show due to a family emergency. In his place was a man named Mass Transit, who looked like Ralph Cramden, and lied about his age on the paperwork. He claimed he was 20, he ended up being 17. And what took place in that match was, it was a downright assault. Let's just be real, it was a downright assault. We will go more into the mass transit incident in further episodes. But when the pay-per-view providers heard about what happened in Revere, Massachusetts that night, they said, we're good here, and pulled the plug on the show. So completely derailing everything that they had worked for, Paul Heyman and the fans of ECW fought and scratched and clawed their way to get the pay-per-view back on the air. And on 
April 13th, 1997, we got ECW's inaugural pay-per-view, Barely Legal. And let's break down this card, shall we? Starting out, we have Louis Piccoli and Balls Mahoney, which, watching it back, awesome match. Rest in peace to both of those men. We have Chris Chetty and JT Smith taking on the full-blooded Italians of Little Guido and Wildfire Tommy Rich. Yeah, NWA legend Tommy Rich playing an Italian. Hilarious. One of my favorite matches was next. It was for the ECW World Tag Team titles, the Dudley Boys versus the Eliminators. Two of the best tag teams in professional wrestling history. Obviously, the Dudleys being the most decorated tag team in the history of the business. And the Eliminators are a tag team that a lot of people, in my opinion, don't speak of enough. Perry Saturn and John Cronus together were just magic in the ring. And for as big a dude as Cronus was, the stuff that that man could do in the ring, unmatched. Absolutely unmatched. Then we have Lance Storm versus Rob Van Dam. Now, this was supposed to be... Uh, somebody else was supposed to be wrestling Lance Storm, but there was an injury taking place, so Rob Van Dam jumped in. And Rob Van Dam beats Lance Storm. It's a fantastic match, by the way. I highly suggest everybody going back and watching this pay-per-view because no duds. No duds on the pay-per-view, in my opinion. But Rob Van Dam cuts a promo basically saying, you know, I'm not a second-rate wrestler. I should have been on this card from the beginning. Now, after beating Lance Storm, I'm worth more money in ECW. I'm also worth more money elsewhere. So this was kind of the jumping point of the Mr. Monday Night Rob Van Dam situation. Then we have an interesting match. It's a six-man tag between Grand Hamada, the Great Sasuke, and Masato Yakasuji, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, against BWO Japan. Yeah, so just like how the NWO have an NWO Japan, the Blue World Order has a Blue World Order Japan that has Dick Togo, Terry Boy, and Kai and Tai leader Taka Michinoku. It's a fun match. I highly suggest everybody watch it. Next up, for the ECW World Television title, we have Pitbull 2 Anthony Durante against the franchise Shane Douglas. And Shane Douglas, in my opinion, is one of the Mount Rushmore. Of ECW. When I think ECW, I think Shane Douglas, Tommy Dreamer, Raven, and the Sandman. That is the Mount Rushmore of ECW in my eyes. And just seeing Shane Douglas work, he's phenomenal. Next up, a feud that I will definitely be talking about in a later episode. Taz versus Sabu. The build to this match was chef's kiss. I will be going into detail on that feud building up into this match and barely legal in the next episode. Um, tremendous work. Those two in the ring together, just nothing but gold. Absolutely nothing but gold. Then we have our main event segment. It starts out with a three-way dance between Stevie Richards, a.k.a. Big Stevie Cool, the Sandman, and the hardcore legend Terry Funk. The winner of this match would face Raven for the world championship immediately following the match. Now, this is just a, uh, it's a, it is a war 
an absolute war. A lot of crazy ladder spots, and the match, the pay-per-view itself is running long. And Terry Funk wins the triple threat. Raven immediately comes out and starts, you know, working over Terry Funk. And Funk ends up winning the ECW World Heavyweight Championship at age 54. He's doing moonsaults. He's going through barbed wire. Terry Funk is, that man's built different. And when Funk wins, they literally had about five seconds. Terry wins, holds up the belt. Three, two, one, and the power goes out. If they would have stayed, tried to stay on the air for any longer, they would have lost the feed completely. It was, it, you couldn't have timed it better to them ending the feed and the breaker blowing. They talk about it in a lot of documentaries about this pay-per-view. And how they were just completely elated and how everything worked out. And they should. It was a fantastic showing. If you have not seen Barely Legal, I personally think it holds up to this day. So do yourself a service if you have Peacock or anywhere to watch ECW Barely Legal. Do yourself a favor and sit down and watch this show. Because... You are going to see what made ECW so great. You have wild high-flying spots. You have chaos. You have fantastic in-ring wrestling. It's all there. So thank you for joining me on the first episode of Wrecking Crew Retrospective. Join us next time where we chronicle another piece of history in the most extreme three letters in pro wrestling. E-C-W.